is a hypothesis test for a proportion? A research center claims that at least 40% of U.S. adults think the census count is accurate. In a random sample of 600 U.S. adults, 35% say that the census count is accurate. At alpha equals 0.05, is there enough evidence to reject the center's claim? Well, this is, as I said, a hypothesis test for a proportion. The first thing that we need to do is go ahead and verify that the sampling distribution for p hat can be approximated by a normal distribution. And we're going to do that by using the following. We want to determine if n times p is greater than or equal to 5 and n times q is greater than or equal to 5. Well, that means we need to know what n is, we need to know what p is, we need to know what q is. In this case, n is going to be the number of adults in the sample. So n is equal to 600. p is going to be our percentage that say yes the census count is accurate so that's going to be 0 0.40 and then Q is going to be equal to 1 minus P and that will be equal to 1 minus 0 0.40 which is 0 0.60 so let's do the calculations of n, and P, n times P and n times Q so we start off with 600 and we multiply that by P which is 0 0.40 and that will be equal to 240 then we'll go ahead and multiply 600 by Q which is going to be 0 0.60 and that will be equal to and Oddly enough, if you just simply take 600 and subtract 240 from that and get 360, you can determine that 600 times 0.6 is equal to 360. Now remember what I was saying. This is n times p. This is n times q. n times p has to be greater than or equal to 5. Likewise, n times q has to be greater than or equal to 5. So both of these check and that means that a z-test for proportion can be used so then the next step number two is to go ahead and identify the claim in other words, I need to state H naught or H sub zero or our null hypothesis and H sub A, which is our alternate hypothesis. So in this case, we know that we're going to use 0 0.40 as our cutoff, and it says at least 0 0.40, which means that's going to be greater than or equal to. So therefore, we can state that little p is greater than or equal to 0 0.40. And then our alternate hypothesis, little p, would be less than 0 0.40. So this ends up being what we call a left-tailed test. And we're going to determine that next by, after we identify the level of significance, we'll then find the critical value and identify the rejection region. So the level of significance, well it's given to us. Alpha is equal to 0 0.05, so we'll go ahead and write that down in our next step. Okay, so our next step is going to go ahead and determine the critical value, which we'll do that by using Table 4 in Appendix B of the textbook. It is also listed in Blackboard under Content, 
under tables and formulas. So z sub 0 or z naught, which is going to be our critical value for this, is going to be equal to, and this is where we bring in the table. So remembering that our level of significance is 0 0.045, I'm going to look for this in the body of the table. So now that I'm looking for 0 0.05, I'm going to scroll and look, and then I see that I don't have quite 0 0.05, but I do have 0 0.0495 and 0 0.0505, which means that 0 0.05 is in between the two. So that means that the z-score is going to be negative 1.64, but remember it's in between the two so it's going to be negative 1.645 this is going to be how I determine where the rejection region is so if I go ahead and draw a rough standard looking curve I can then draw a line here at z sub 0 is equal to negative 1.645 and anything that's going to be to the left of this since this is a left tail test and how do I know it's a left tail test because that is pointing to the left so therefore this right here is the rejection region So now I need to go ahead and determine what the standardized test statistic is. In this case, z. And z is given by the following formula, where p hat minus p divided by the square root of p times q divided by n is going to give me the value that I need to determine whether or not I can reject the claim we know what p is we know what q is we know what n is but what is p naught p naught is going to be the original sample percentage in this case it's going to be 0.35 so that's going to be p hat okay so we we'll go ahead and we start plugging in these particular values to determine what the test statistic is. So z will be equal to 0.35 minus 0 0.40 divided by the square root of 0.4 times 0.6 divided by 600 the best thing to do is to put this all into the calculator at once if you can so that you can eliminate round off error and I would suggest that you go ahead and put parentheses around the numerator and by doing that when you go ahead and type this in and you do this division by the square root of the product and the quotient you'll end up with the following value which is going to be negative 2.5 so we'll go ahead and make that two decimal places so negative 2.50 and this is less than z sub 0 so since z is less than z naught or c, z sub 0 and let me show you by putting those values in there we have negative 2.50 is less than negative 2.645 I apologize I said less than I meant to say greater than in this particular case so since z is greater than z sub 0 that means that we will fail to reject 
the null hypothesis and that means that we can write this out as there is enough evidence so as I was saying there is enough evidence at the five percent level of significance to support the center's claim that at least forty percent of US adults think the census count is accurate now I know that sometimes in the textbook when they're reviewing doing these problems they say use technology but for this particular problem using this simple formula is probably the easiest way to calculate and solve this particular problem which as I said at the beginning is a hypothesis test for a proportion <laughs>